serious. Teachers of Reddit, what is the most disturbing thing your student has ever done? Story 1. I teach four-year-olds part-time, which means I usually do art and recreation in the afternoons. There's this girl in my class, let's call her Mary, who is a tiny terror that frequently runs around making other kids cry. Her moves are very calculated. A hair pull, kicking a toy over, snatching art. She waits until the other child is crying before she relents. She never wants the toy, just the reaction. On the other hand, this boy, let's call him Jim, is her polar opposite and often the voice of reason in my class. He's a gentle giant, the biggest kid in preschool. He shares happily, is kind during playtime, and is probably the most thoughtful human I've ever met. Well, one day during outside time, Mary kept targeting Jim. He was a pretty good-natured kid the whole time. She would snatch a shovel from him, and he would respond kindly by saying, It's okay, you can have it, toys are for sharing. Stuff like that. Sidebar. Remember those giant red and yellow cars that kids sit in and pedal with their feet? The yard has five for the kids to share. Mary was leaning against the wall, and Jim was pushing one of those cars. The kids like running around with them, so that was normal. Jim was probably a good 30 feet or so away from her when he suddenly started accelerating. He was aimed like a homing missile, pointing straight at poor and clueless Mary. Genuinely believed he would turn away at the last minute or stop, but uh, I, I was wrong. He slammed the car right into Mary, effectively crunching her against the wall. I'll never forget how long it took for her to inhale. I was shaking. I thought he cracked her ribs or something. Her entire back was bruised, but thankfully no further damage. I was too shocked to be angry. After passing Mary to my co-teacher, I turned to Jim, who was sulking in the corner, and asked, Why did you do that? He just shrugged and very calmly said, I was just trying to take care of our problem. 100% scared of this kid now. Mary is still an ass. She just avoids Jim. He's the silent guardian of the preschool, apparently. Story 2. I was a supervisor for a special program that involved 20 students that were expelled from other schools. Most of them were known gang members. The program had a strict no bandana policy. One day, Kid 1, male 16, stole Kid 2's, male 17, cigarettes while Kid 2 was in an office session about his homework. We found out later that Kid 1 thought it was hilarious and was laughing about it. Kid 2 goes for his smokes during break and can't find them. He proceeds to flip out and start screaming about how he's going to mess someone up. No one admitted it. We de-escalated the situation and later took him to the store to buy a new pack for him. A few days go by and Kid 1 gets ratted out by another student who was in the same gang as Kid 2. We didn't know any of this was going on at the time. So one afternoon during a group session, we would have them sit in a circle during some lessons instead of at desks. Out of nowhere, these two boys jump up and yell, Yo, Kid 1, as they literally run at him and proceed to beat him up right in front of everyone until the staff broke it up. All three got expelled after that, and I have no idea what happened to them, although I can imagine some scenarios based on how committed they were to gang life. The majority of those kids were daily smokers, weed, and tobacco, so this was not a moment to try and be authoritative about smoking. Cigarettes were a coping mechanism more than anything. These kids had really crappy lives overall. Cigarettes are a kind of stress relief for them. No one joins a gang because they grew up in a privileged environment. Story 3 I taught college. I taught mostly seniors and grad students. I had to essentially sit with a disturbed student in my office and keep him talking as campus police searched his office and workstation. The kid made threats against other students and the students waited to tell me until it got really bad. When I intervened, he started threatening me, like on my personal cell phone, personal email, stuff like that. My husband told me to tell campus police, which I did, but everyone told me there was nothing really they could do. The chair of my department couldn't even kick him out of my class because he was enrolled through a different department. His home department was slow to do anything. So I called a meeting with him to talk things out, but I told my TA to search his stuff. My TA immediately called campus police who went with him to search those areas. They found some stuff in his office, enough to kick him out of school, but nothing that rose to criminality. Well, that is until he brandished the gun that was in his backpack. This happened as he stepped out of my office and my TA and campus police stood there. I watched a campus cop literally tackle him off his feet. Why not call the real cops? Well, it depends on how your university police force is set up. At ours, city police don't have jurisdiction over the campus. We have a bona fide police force, graduated from the academy and all, who operate to enforce the law as well as university rules supported by an auxiliary force. If, as a student, you interacted with campus police, that's probably who you talk to. However, when it comes to serious criminal acts, they usually call in the city police because it's a small department. The issue is that if they called city police every time someone sent threatening messages, the cops would never leave. It's hard to tell in the moment what's just someone venting in a very unhealthy way and when it's a serious threat. I've had a student corner me in my office crying and screaming, which was much more disturbing at the time, but turned out to be harmless. This guy didn't raise his voice once. He was angry, but seemed mostly befuddled by the whole thing. 
why was I even involving myself in a dispute among students kind of attitude. The threats were taken out of context and he apologized if they scared me. In the moment, it felt more like I was dealing with an arrogant prick who was going to sick his parents on me when someone was truly else was disturbed. It wasn't until the very end that I realized the danger I had placed myself in. What they found, I really don't want to go into the details, but it was related to breaking the rules of appropriate use of campus workstation. To those saying you can't search that without cause, actually, no, it's university property and they allow you to use it as such. Much like your high school locker or work desk, they can search it at any time. Story 4. I used to teach a PE class to 3-5 to five year olds. I had this one kid who used to come with his friend from kinder. His friend's mother apologized to me numerous times and said she would never have offered to bring him if she knew what he was like. More than once, I had to evacuate the rest of the kids from the gym because this three-year-old would be running around the gym screaming f***ing c*** at the top of his lungs while trying to punch, kick, or headbutt other kids. You never knew what would set him off. If you asked him to kick a ball, he was equally likely to kick another student or the ball. One time he got so violent that I couldn't get him away from the other kids and ended up wrapping him up in the firm cuddle technique, which they definitely don't teach teachers about anymore. I basically dropped him to his knees with me on my knees behind him, arms wrapped around his arms and his chest. The only part he could move was his head and he kept trying to smash the back of his head into my face. But the worst part was the laughter. He normally had a vague, empty look on his face, but when he was trying to hurt someone, he would scream with laughter wearing the biggest crap-eating grin. I only had him for 10 sessions once a week, but holy hell, I will never forget that kid. Story 5 I'm taking your question to mean in class rather than things you know they did but had nothing to do with school, in which case the bisexual love triangle that ended in a double homicide with my former student in jail after having fled Louisiana for Las Vegas would definitely top the list. A few years ago, I was teaching 8th grade at a different school than the one I am now, and thank God I'm at my school now. I love it here. I had so many horror stories from that place. Some examples from my specific classroom. The student who was running a d ring out of his locker, complete with five employees and secret codes and stuff. The student who had a combination of autism, ADHD, and oppositional defiant disorder, which meant that the thing I was told I was supposed to do when he came into my classroom and started swearing at me and the other students was pretending he wasn't there. That same student was given some tape to tape his own mouth shut if he wanted to. He made the tape into a sword and began poking the other students with it, and that accommodation was taken away. The student who had been exposed so much head trauma from his mother and stepfather that I guess it turned him into a sociopath somehow. If you did not talk to him in exactly the right way, and sometimes if you did, he would have a complete meltdown where he would actively threaten physical harm to you. The student who was one of the lieutenants in the aforementioned ring who was incredibly smart and the only student I've ever had who I was convinced would commit a crime someday. I have had multiple students go to jail after they left my classroom, two for murder, several others for assault, this kid scared me more than them. Something about the look behind his eyes. He knew exactly the right things to say and do, but you could tell the moment he was making the choice to do the exact opposite just to see what would happen. Like a cat knocking something off a high shelf just to watch it shatter. That is the most messed up story from my time at that school. I left after that year for my current job, which is amazing. The next year, I heard from a teacher that stayed at the school that one of the new 8th graders and former 7th graders who were commonly acknowledged to be the most difficult group at the school when I was there literally set another student on fire in the science lab with a Bunsen burner, so it got worse. Alright, so here's a story with a bisexual love triangle. One of my students, Jay, was always a little… I don't know. She was an interesting character. I could never quite get a read on her. But she was my student and it was my job to love her and encourage her, so I did. We had a good relationship, and the last time I saw her, she was riding her bike through a neighborhood that wasn't hers a year and a half after I stopped teaching her. I waved hi, and she waved back. She was, at that point, 16. Three years later, one of my former other students sent me a message on Facebook. Have you seen this? It was a link to a news article. Jay was on the freaking court. They were looking for her in connection with the murder of a guy in the city where I taught. It was suspected she was on her way to Vegas with the guy's girlfriend who she had been sleeping with. A few days later, the follow-up. She was in police custody and the girlfriend was dead. She was being extradited back to Louisiana. It's the quiet ones, man. Story 6. I've taught some university courses on occasion. One student comes to mind immediately. She was in a class of mine that was on an accelerated, condensed schedule. As such, an absence of more than half a class period meant you couldn't pass as there were mandated percentages. She was very late a few times. I let it slide since she was fairly intelligent and normally caught up quickly but we had a chat about how important it was that she get there on time. Finally, she just didn't show up at all for three class periods. 
Basically, there was no way in hell she could pass the class due to that, and she missed enough content that she would be far behind. So she comes in one day and sits down like normal after. I didn't try to help her catch up as she didn't speak to me or ask for assistance. So when things are over and done with, she comes in one day while I'm with another group, wanting to know why I failed her. I pointed out her attendance and content she missed, she blew the final, etc. She starts giving me excuses about broken down cars and so on. She could have emailed or called, but nothing. Then she's screaming at me that I'm ruining her life and she won't graduate. When I pointed out that I was very clear that she had made zero effort to work with me, she literally stepped forward, pulled her fist back, ready to lay one on me. She made one last demand, which I refused. And by that time, someone walking by, I had stepped out of the classroom, saw her actions and asked if there was a problem. I wasn't concerned. I'm a pretty solid guy and she was a smaller woman. She simply wouldn't take any responsibility for her actions. She eventually wrote everyone in my school trying to get around me and or get me into trouble. No go. I had complete support. Story 7. I worked in a nursery and had a little girl there who I would do one-to-one work with because of her serious attachment disorder. It wasn't diagnosed at that point yet and the nursery staff was totally under-equipped and underfunded to deal with this poor kid. She just turned three at the time, had really underdeveloped speech, didn't know how to cry, and was the most violent child I have ever met. She was incredibly strong due to trauma early on. Children who have lived in abusive homes generally have much more strength because they're constantly in the fight-or-flight reflex, high on adrenaline, and was already removed from the abusive home living with her alcoholic grandparents. I saw her swing a metal pole at a kid's head, stomp on children, shout obscenities, you name it. But her most disturbing thing was biting other children, specifically little babies, on their faces. Whenever we had outside playtime, we had to have someone right behind her all the time, especially when the babies were out at the same time as us because she would be sweetly playing in one corner, you'd look away, and bam, she'd be on the other end of the playground viciously attacking a baby. She put one of those poor little babies in a hospital before I started there, and there were many other incidents during my time too. The good news is that working with her for just a few months and really, really giving her attention and love and patience paid off. She learned how to cry, she learned how to show love and frustration, and she stopped biting towards the end. It was really, really hard work, and I definitely got too emotionally involved, but it was worth every moment. Broke my heart when I had to leave. Story 8. Back when I was a student aide, I had a second grader come up to me with a pencil in his hand, and this is how the ensuing conversation went. Mister, guess what this is? Oh, is it a pencil? Nope, it's a flesh ripper. This is how I rip off all of your flesh. And then he proceeds to walk away smiling. The same kid showed me his Chucky doll and told me that he likes the way it kills people. The kid's remarks were messed up, but what disturbed me more was that when I told his classroom teacher, she was like, ah, yeah, that's Johnny for you, and did nothing about it. On a lighter note, I had a kid rip the biggest ass flapper in the middle of a super quiet test. I had to tie my shoe behind the desk to try and keep my composure. Story 9. I'm pretty sure I've posted this before, but here it goes. I taught 7th grade a few years ago. One of my students is a uh, bit off. Not off like I'm going to harm you, but off like I have an old toy chest full of all my haircuts and a picture of my mom's pretty friend. Let's call this kid Carl. So one day, Carl comes to school and you can hear that he's snotty sick like that stuff isn't going anywhere. Oceans of molten mucus clog up his nose. He's snorting every five seconds, blowing his nose, hefty, meaty blows of the nose, filling tissue after tissue. On this day in my class, everyone was reading independently. I scanned the room to find Carl hunched over his book, sideways in his chair, blowing his nose violently into a tissue. I thought, man, this poor kid should probably go home sleeping or something. Then I thought, oh God, hell, why, as Carl opened the hefty, soggy tissue, looked suspiciously around the room and took a big old lick of the contents. Then another. Then I walked up behind him as calmly as I could muster and said, Hey Carl, throw that away, please. The look in his guise was not one of disgrace. It was more like the greedy, defensive look I get when I approach my dog as he's gnawing on a bone. The look was 100% no, this is mine, you cannot have it. That's it. That and one time I found a kid just lackadaisically watching porn during reading time. Just bored as crap watching porn on his phone. Story 10. Stole another teacher's car. I'm a special education teacher and this happened about three years ago. He was a 7th grader who got into his fair share of trouble, but he was almost always polite and respectful to adults. Towards the end of the day, the door was open to another teacher's classroom and he walked in to say hi. They made some small talk and he said goodbye and left, and I think this was during lunch. About an hour later, when the school day is ending, my coworker is looking for her car keys and can't find them. They were in her purse, which was on her desk, and although the purse was there, the keys were gone. 
She looked frantically for them and couldn't find them, and upon checking the parking lot, her car was gone too. The security footage for the parking lot was checked and clear as day that the same student who came in to say hi could be seen walking into the parking lot, calmly unlocking the door with a key and then casually driving off. Apparently, when she wasn't looking, he had stolen her keys. Before long, she was at his apartment door with the police. He was home, and despite being told he was seen on tape taking the car, he refused to admit he did it. The surrounding area of the building was searched, and sure enough, her car was parked two blocks away with a different set of license plates on it. Security footage from a nearby building showed him parking the car, then returning a few minutes later and switching the plates. The police then arrested him, and when his room was searched, they found both the plates and the car keys. Apparently, the week before, he had also stolen his mother's car and crashed it. He was never seen in my school again. None of the other students ever found out what he did. I don't know what became of him with the criminal case, but I heard he was sent to live with a family member in New Jersey. I teach in the South Bronx. Story 11 At the first school that I taught at, I had a girl come up to me one day and say, Robert has a knife. I pulled Robert into the hallway to talk with him about it. He said that he didn't have a knife, but he did have a box cutter. I asked him why he had it, and he said, because I'm tired of Chris. Chris was an annoying suck-up, but wasn't really bad or mean to other kids. I asked Robert what he was planning on doing to Chris. He said, I'm going to get him in the bathroom. I usually took the class to the restroom after lunch, but I didn't that day because they were being rowdy in the hallway. I took Robert to the office, and after hearing the story, the principal chewed him out. She then called Robert's mom, and she chewed him out on the phone. And here's the kicker. Robert knew that he was in serious trouble. He knew that what he was planning was wrong, and he just didn't care. Not in a false bravado macho type of way, he literally just didn't care. I hate to predict a kid's future criminal endeavors, but that kid scares me. By the way, Robert was just 8 years old at the time. Story 12 I taught third graders for a year, so the kids were around 9 years old. It was a couple of days before the summer holidays, and I asked the kids what they were going to do during summer. I got to this one girl and asked her what she was going to do and she happily announced she was going to Germany with her sister and parents. I asked her what she was going to do in Germany and she said she was going to ask people if they had one euro. I was like, what? And she proceeded to sit down on the floor with a really sad look on her face, stuck her hand out to me and said, see, like this, please miss, do you just have one euro? I'm hungry. She didn't really see anything wrong with this and I'm pretty sure she didn't really understand what she was doing. I was quite alarmed by this, so I informed the other school staff. It turned out that even though they weren't actually poor, her parents were regularly taking their two daughters to Germany over the summer where they would make them beg for money in the streets. I heard the girl and her sister got pulled out of school shortly after that, but I don't know what happened after that since I don't work there anymore. Story 13 I used to teach at an alternative high school, so a lot of my students were kids on probation, kids from areas with a lot of gang violence. Many of them had issues related to the fact that they were born addicted, that kind of thing. I had a student who had worked with hard to build a good rapper. One Friday, he looked at me in the eyes and told me, completely calmly, that I shouldn't come to work on Monday. He kept telling me that he didn't want me to be there on Monday. When I finally pressed him on why I should not come to work on Monday, he told me that he was going to blow this stuff up. So I said, you know I need to report this, right? He told me to do what I had to do. He was arrested right out of my classroom and I had to be interviewed by the police. I was honestly really traumatic. I ended up calling out Monday even though I knew nothing was going to happen because my anxiety went through the roof. I called out a lot after that and found a new job shortly after. But I still have a great deal of compassion for that student. I think about him often and I hope he's okay.